I'm Kate Crocker with the ACLU of Massachusetts. I um, run something called the Technology for Liberty Project at the ACLU here. Um, and we work on a whole host of issues related to privacy and liberty and um, technology. Various strategies, tactics, and technologies that are being deployed in the war on terror um, in these dirty wars in various countries overseas because those tactics, strategies, and technologies have a way of coming home. And uh, this official, uh, he was asking him, why is this intensive bombing going on in <laughs> northern Laos? Nothing to do with the war in Indochina, just destruction of a poor peasant society. Uh, one of the most malevolent acts of uh, modern history, I think. And he finally, the official finally explained. He said, "Look, there's a temporary bombing of North, uh, cessation of the bombing of North Vietnam, and we have all these planes, and we don't have to do it. So we'll bomb Laos." Okay, I think that's uh, the lesson of history that we should bear in mind in reading Jeremy's exposures of first Blackwater and the mercenary army and, uh, and now uh, JSOC, the so-called secret army, secret the same way the secret wars are secret. If you have a reporter who's willing to, has the courage and integrity to expose it, you can expose it. Uh, these resources are there, they're growing. They have a self-generating capacity. They're going to get larger and larger. They're going to want more and more to do. And if one target disappears, they'll be turned somewhere else. And uh, as Jeremy hinted, they'll be turned here. And there's a history of that, too. Some of you want to read about it. There's a very important book by a historian, very good historian, Al, Al McCoy, uh, who, among other things, studied history of drugs, and torture, and so on. But he's a Philippine historian, mainly. And he did a study of the Philippine War, the U.S. counterinsurgency war in the Philippines in the, over a century ago. It was a brutal, murderous war. Hundreds of thousands of people slaughtered the horror story. And he pointed out that at the time, uh, after was over when the sort of pacification began. The U.S. Uh, uh, forces, uh, were the Marines mostly in those days, were using the highest technology available to develop a surveillance system over the uh, Philippine society. So they could do it uh, by our standards now at a primitive level, the kinds of things that uh, Jeremy described. And they did. And it's turned the Philippines into a, this is Philippines, a hundred years later, have never escaped from this. Philippine society is <coughs> the consequences of this long terror war. But McCoy pointed out something else. He pointed out that these measures from before the First World War were very quickly picked up domestically, both by the British and the United States, and applied to the surveillance and control techniques within their own societies, the FBI here and so on. Uh, and, uh, and that's what we can expect, and signs that are already around. The resources are there, they're self-generating, they're kept under a veil, so not too much inspection of them, though there could be, as you've seen. They're going to grow, they're going to develop uh, if they if, if the current targets disappear, they'll move on to new targets, because that's the nature of these systems, just like the planes who had nowhere to bomb, so they decided to send them the bomb more than Laos, and they'll come home. Uh, already happening, and we can expect more and more of it. I think that's the historical background that should very much be kept in mind.